Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome, Tim. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. As Alan said, I, I think there is no better uh, CEO to help us frame the next uh, 24 hours of, of conversation. Um, and I want to start on the subject of what the CEO's role is, in, in your opinion, with an observation that as little as a decade ago, most companies, and I would include Apple, mm -hmm. the CEO did not regularly talk about things like social issue, issues or policy if it didn't relate precisely to the company's business. And as CEO of Apple, you have. And so let me ask you to start at a high level. How do you frame the role of the CEO? Mm -hmm. Well, for, for, for Apple, we've always been about changing the world. And it, it uh, became clear to me some number of years ago that you don't do that by staying quiet on things that matter. And, and so for us, that's really been the driving, uh, the driving issue. And uh, there's, no, there's no formula about when you speak and when you don't. But, but for the way, the way that I think about it is, um, is it something that Apple has a special expertise on? Um, because I don't want Apple to be another you know, talking head, right? Uh, we, we should only speak when we have certain knowledge to, to bring to the subject. Uh, for, uh, and I always ask myself, do we have standing? Hmm. You know, do we have a right to talk about this issue? And, and, and generally speaking, it, more than just, uh, it's not enough to, to be a large company to speak, I, or at least I don't see it like that at all. And so I, I think about those, and so what, what that means for us is we typically speak about education, about privacy, uh, about human rights, uh, about immigration, and about the environment. Uh, because there's something that we have uh, where we can bring a point of view it, it may be discounted. Uh, most people may view it to be not cor correct, right? But, it, but it, nevertheless, it's a point of view that we can share, and we think we have something to offer in those spaces. Let, let me challenge you on, yeah. on, on those specifically. So yeah. let, let's say, let's put a pin in education. Apple always has had a large education yeah. market. Let's put a pin in the environment. You, for, for, I think for some obvious reasons, you're very proud of that. Um, and um, and, and, and but, but what but immigration and human rights why are those why why does apple have standing on those there's nothing commercial in that well i think well first of all i don't think business should only deal in commercial things i, I think that's a, a a fallacy i think business business to me is a no nothing more than a collection of people and uh, if people should have values which i i argue they should then by extension, a company should have values because it's just a collection of people. Uh, but on immigration in particular, we have a lot of immigrants that work at Apple. Uh, we have uh, first generation, and obviously at some point we're all uh, uh, immigrants. But if you look at the number of people that we have on DACA, we've got over 300 folks that are here on DACA. And, and so uh, arguably, I, I, I want to stand up for them. Uh, we have uh, several thousand people that are uh, a part of our team that are on H-1Bs that may be uh, in the deep green card backlog. And, and so this gives us both a perspective to share about the importance of having people with different points of view when you're running a global company with global uh, customers, uh, but also it gives you a bit of a perspective on what the life, the life is like. And, uh, you know, I, I, to me, in to, too often in the case of immigration, uh, people quickly get to numbers, you know, and, uh, but there are real people behind this that have, you know, real feelings and, and, uh, and that are very, core, a core part of the United States. And, and so, uh, so I, I think we do have a, a significant, significant standing there. And the, the, 
diversity of our company, uh, where it is never enough and you can never, uh, you never really achieve uh, the end here. If, if you do, you're, you're kidding yourself. But uh, we have a lot of different people from a lot of different places, and we, we are, are accepting of people from everywhere. And so we think we have something to offer about talking about that kind of environment. And ultimately, that is what human rights is all about. It's about just treating people with dignity and respect at the, at the end of the day. And, and so these are topics that we think we can add something to. And, and so we're not, we, don't, we don't get into politics on any of these. We, we stick to policy. How are people treated? What is the immigration policy? Uh, these are the things that, that we stick to. We, we're, and, and we work with people from, from uh, both parties or no party. Uh, and at times, uh, one party doesn't like something we do. At times, the other party doesn't. And at times, both of them don't. You know? but, but we just stick to the policy. And I think if you do that, you can, uh, most people, I think, will respect that. Even when people disagree, they'll respect that, that that is what you're doing. And I, I, I appreciate that you say that there's no formula, but yeah. I, I want to try to get you to articulate how you and your management team, or maybe it's more personal, maybe it's just mm -hmm. you, how you think about when to speak out. Last week, you were one of the earlier CEOs to call the administration's current policy with the migrant issue and the separation of children and families specifically um, inhumane. And, and interestingly, you did it in Ireland. You, you did it outside the United States, I, I presume, because you were asked. It, you, you were in Ireland and you were asked. Yeah, I was asked and uh, I said what I thought. <laughs> uh, but, but, so why did I do it? Yeah. I, I guess I could have taken the normal uh, CEO pivot or, or whatever, which, <laughs> which I'm not particularly good at. Um, but. This is an issue, if you think about the, the folks here on DACA, they, they, they were very much in this same situation. Uh, somebody brought them, whoever brought them may have been illegal at the time, probably were illegal at the time. Uh, they brought a child in that was one year old, two year old, three years old. And so dial back to this situation and think, would you want those two separated? Does this make any sense? And, and, and uh, you know, so I, I look at that and, and I think this gets, this is square in the, in the dignity and respect uh, area and, and felt we needed to say something. Having known you for a long time, I'll tell you that you're better at the CEO pivot than you give yourself credit for, <laughs> uh, at, at least in regard to not addressing something when you don't want to address it. Uh, when is the right time or what are the right kinds of issues to just, you know, keep your trap shut yeah. uh, rather than engage as you did on that issue last week and, and as you're doing now? I think you, I think you ask yourself, uh, is it a value of your company? You know, if you, you, you may not, you may take a, uh, everybody in here may not agree that companies should have values. Yeah. So it kind of starts at that point. Yeah. But if you do agree with that, and if something happens that isn't consistent with those, uh, then, then I think uh, you need to speak. Because if you don't, think about if you don't, then uh, you're, you're, it's sort of the, it's, you're, you're in the appalling silence of the good people uh, category, and this is something I've never wanted to be a part of. And taking that, I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna put you one last time and then yeah. move on, yep. which is, you said the companies are more than uh, about just commercial beha behavior, they are the collection of the people that they make up, um, which sounds similar to that Supreme Court case about you know, corporations having the, uh, being able to, um, to, having the rights of speech. But what do you say to someone who says, you know, respectfully, this is a slippery slope and I think companies really should stick to making good products and making money and that's it. And, and, you know, and by the way, let their shareholders go, mm -hmm. go spend that money on their political causes and their values and their, their beliefs. Well, I would say we're not, putting money into politics. And so I strongly disagree with uh, 
companies uh, or the whole concept of PACs in general of people who don't vote putting money in political campaigns. And so Apple doesn't give one dollar to a political campaign. This is not what we're about. Uh, we do discuss privacy policy. Mm -hmm. We discuss immigration policy. Uh, we discuss corporate tax reform, the, the policies around this. And so we, we do that. And I think that most people look at that and say, well, that, that makes some sense. Do all people? No. I mean, uh, you know, occasionally you get people on uh, at different groups saying you should be all about making money. And if you're not uh, spending all your time doing this, you're wasting your time. But I, I, I don't really think the vast majority of people want that. And quite frankly, for the CEO of Apple, whether it's me or someone else, you're never going to fulfill your mission of changing the world in today's environment by doing that, right? You're not, gonna, you're, you're, you're not going to do all that you can do by staying quiet. The other, the issue- And I don't mean just speaking out when something's going wrong. Yep. It's both, I yep. mean, you, because you want to amplify the great things, and there's a lot of great things happening in different places. The issue that, that um, you mentioned toward the outset that I said that I meant to say we'll put a pin in yeah. is privacy, and I say put a pin in because this is an issue that is not new for Apple, and it's also a, you, you staked out a position that was commercially beneficial, beneficial, let's say, to Apple because you had a strong point of view. That issue has come around to Apple's perspective, I, I would say, and I want to know where you think that issue of privacy is going. Well, it's actually not true what you said, so let me just correct that for a minute. Please. Is our... Our view of privacy started from our values, and then we crafted our business model to that. It didn't start with one, and then we backed into, oh, well, we'll feel good about this one. Uh, and as you say, we've, we've felt strongly about privacy when no one cared. And so this isn't something that we woke up one morning and said, oh, the media is, a, is uh, focusing on privacy today. Let's do that. Uh, we've, we've felt very strongly on this issue from the beginning because we could see, not the, not the specific details, but we could see that the building of the detailed profile on people uh, likely would result in significant harm over time, that it could be used for too many nefarious things. And, and, and we think that people d uh, in today's environment don't have a full view of who has what and, and how much of their lives is open to, has been opened to uh, commercial entities and, and, and uh, public entities. Now you've been you've been critical both directly and indirectly of, of Facebook's policies on on data privacy. Uh, Apple did something interesting today, which is you're you're wading more directly into the information business than I think Apple ever has been with the with Apple News devoting human intelligence to the coverage of the midterm elections. Could you tell everybody why Apple's doing that? Well, we if you. Um start at the macro level, we've always believed in curation. And so uh, if you go on the App Store, uh, the App Store has been curated since the, we put the first app in there in 2008. You know, we, we felt a duty to review apps, make sure they did what they said that they did, make sure there was not pornography in them, and so on and so forth. And, and since the early days, we were criticized for doing that because people felt like, oh, you're limiting this or that. And but we felt like, you know, this is our store and um, we it says something about us as to what's in there. And 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 so we've done that from day one. We've taken that same view to news. Why did we do that? Because we saw that the news was kind of going a little crazy. And it doesn't mean that people have to uh, uh, people that use an iPhone have to only use Apple News to get their news. Uh, you can go anywhere you want to, obviously. 
Uh, you can put all kinds of different apps on there. But, but for Apple News, we felt the top stories should be uh, selected by human. And not to, to be political at all, but just to make sure, and, and not to check the views of, of, of these, but to make sure that you're not picking content that just strictly has the goal of enraging people. That, that you know, content that has a reason to be out there. And so we hope to bring this same kind of uh, view to different subjects over periods of time. And uh, arguably one that's important in the US right now is the midterm election. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we, we're gonna pick from a wide variety of different outlets, outlets that are viewed to be conservative to liberal to in between, if there is such a thing anymore. Um, just sort of all over the, the spectrum. And we're gonna have uh, different people that are going to be writing exclusively. Uh, for this, and, and uh, so I'm, I'm really optimistic that we can make a contribution here. You know, it's so interesting listening to you talk. Would you, in, in Facebook and Google in particular have assiduously said, we will not choose. That's the beauty of Facebook and Google. <clears throat> we don't choose, the algorithm chooses, our users choose. And Apple is saying the, the, dire the, the direct opposite. We, we will help choose because we think we have a contribution to make. Yeah, I'm, I'm not being critical of people that do something different. But for us, Apple has always stood for curation. Understood. We've always believed that quality, not quantity, was the most important thing. Whether you think about uh, our goals and products to everything, right? And, and so we're going we're gonna to pick uh, the articles and, and have some great people write. And uh, if, if people like it, uh, they can uh, go to that section of Apple News, and if they don't, then uh, they don't. They obviously can get news from a, a whole variety of other sources. My, my colleagues at a certain uh, premium business magazine can identify with your statement of, of quality uh, over, over yeah. quantity. Yeah. We, we, we appreciate that. I think people want it right now. I think so too. You know, we've we've lived through this period of time in. Uh, Let's talk about something else yeah. that, that, that people want. Earlier this year, two investor groups criticized Apple specifically for not being as attentive as it could be <clears> to <throat> the issue of, of addiction of, of, uh, of smartphones, that they're, they're too addictive, they cause bad behavior. Um, whether, in, whether or not in response to them, Apple just recently said, we're, we're doing something about that. Um, why now? And I guess the, the, the less kind way of asking the question is, what, what took you so long? Uh, we've done nothing in response to uh, a specific point that was made. We've been working on uh, starting with parental controls since the beginning, right? And so we've always taken a level of responsibility here. People, parents have had the ability uh, for, for years to select which apps go on their kids' phones, which apps don't. Maybe that's more important than, than what, what do. Uh, and also to monitor the, or, or to uh, you know, not allow explicit songs, to not allow anything other than G-rated uh, movies and so forth. And so there's been a fair amount of control there. But I think it's become clear to all of us uh, that some, uh, some of us are spending too much time on our devices. And, and, and so the, the, what we've tried to do is then think through pretty deeply, well, how could we help with that? Because honestly, we've never wanted people to overuse our products. We're not about usage. We want people to get some, uh, to be empowered from them and to be able to do things they couldn't do otherwise. But if you're spending all the time on your phone, you're spending too much time, right? Uh, but as we thought through this, we thought, you know, this is not an area where, uh, like exercise, where you can say 30 minutes a day is kind of good for almost everybody. And, um, you know, standing 12 hours a day is pretty much good for uh, mo the vast majority of people. It's not like that, because some people use their phone or their iPad to read books. 
Some people use them to listen to music in the background. Some people use their iPad as their TV. Um, there's, there are all kind, there's a, such a wide variety of cases. And, and so what we're doing is, one, not just for kids, but for everybody. Yeah, the rest of us and, need it too. And uh, all of us need it. And, and I, I, I've been monitoring my own, mm. is uh, we're, you can easily get a report that shows where you're spending your time, how much time, where you're spending it. So you're a beta user. How has this changed your behavior so far? It's made me cut down. On what? It's made me cut down on notifications uh -huh. significantly. Uh -huh. Because I, I began to monitor the number of notifications I was getting from different services. And you just, on the surface, it looks like this is crazy. <laughs> notifications was supposed to be telling me something that I needed to know in the moment. And, and yet, in some cases, they become a traffic driver for people. And, uh, and so I began to start slashing the number of notifications I was getting. This winds up helping you a lot. I started monitoring the number of times, which we will also tell you, of how many times you pick up your phone. This is going to be available to everybody in Everybody. Uh -huh. Every, we're building it into the OS. That's a scary we, number. Because we want everybody to have this information. And then you can do what you want to with it. You might say, I don't want to know any of this. You might do like I've done, as you've started saying, well, I can make this change and this change and this change. Uh, in addition to that, we're doing a whole bunch of other things for parents to be able now not just to disqualify an app from their kid's use, uh -huh. but now they can set a time limit yeah. and say, you know, you can have uh, 30 minutes a day on social media or 50, whatever it is. Uh, and excuse me, Tim, it's, am it's amusing and telling that you're calling this the thing that all of us parents already called it, which is screen time. You know, we said we want less screen time, so yeah. that's what you're calling yeah. the, the tool. And so I, th I think it's going to be, I think it's pretty profound. It's simple because it's built in, but it's profound if you want it to be. But before I uh, go to the room for a couple questions, yeah. I want to end on uh, tomorrow our CEOs are going to be having working groups where we're going to try to have specific suggestions around how companies, either individually or as a group, mm -hmm. can change the world, can, can make the world a, uh, a better place. One of them is around um, trying to change the metrics that businesses use to measure their performance with an eye toward diminishing short-termism and maximizing long-termism. Apple has been good at this for a long time. My, my, my challenge to you is that you know it, it worked out really well for Apple. That's part of your culture, so now you can continue to be long-term oriented. What's an action that the, that the rest of the companies in the room can take to make themselves behave in a long-term fashion, despite the pressures to be short-term? You, you have to have uh, a board and a CEO and a sort of a top-level management team that is willing to put aside the stock price. Because if you're making a decision based on the investor, short-term investors, you're going to be guaranteed to be making terrible decisions. And so this is like number one, two, and three. <laughs> uh, if you do that, it will set the tone in the organization. And so I, I look at um, the investments we make, the big ones, are all multi-year, sometime, uh, you know, five, seven, ten years out. And, and they're, they're certainly not conducive to a 90-day cycle. And so we report every 90 days because it's a requirement. If I were king for a day, 90-day earnings, things would be just flushed. They're a remnant of a uh, different day and time, I think, and uh, have really are not set for modern business. And so what you have to do as a CEO on the board is you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm going to take the heat. And I'm going to tell my investors, we welcome all of you, but if you're short term, I'd really advise you not to get in, because it's not how we're going to make our decisions. Um, but as you know, many CEOs may, in the course of three or six months or nine months, they may well lose their jobs in that, in that scenario. And, and your answer to them is, so what? That's what you're being paid to do, right? I, I, I think if you're the CEO, you have to look at something broader than yourself. 
That's there has to be something bigger. And okay. your, your company is not going to be successful if you're making 90-day decisions. Please raise your hands if you want to ask Tim a question. I'll look to the mic handlers to see who they go to. Uh, there's one right over here. Right behind you is the, uh, please identify yourself, sir. Hi, I'm Jay Gould from Interface. Tim, do you think that corporate governance reform is required to get CEOs and boards aligned around this longer-term value creation? I think it would be uh, good if that were the case. Uh, do I think it's required? No. I don't think there are governance issues. No, no governance issue requires you to think short term. And there's no, there's no built-in uh, barrier to thinking long term. Uh, now, would it be easier? Yes. And more people would would be thinking long term if the if uh, things like earnings were not every 90 days and so on and so forth. But I don't think it's required. It's an, I'm going to paraphrase. It's on you, not not uh, not not the governance experts. One more. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, yeah. Take the mic, please. Yeah. Right behind you. Yep. As a publicly traded company and yeah. and recognizes one of the world's most sustainable companies, when our founder died, we went into this mourning period. Yeah. And during that time, there was an unwanted knock on the door, and the board had outside counsel that came in and said they could only represent one of our stakeholder groups in making a decision on whether they should accept an outside offer or not. So the governance of the company required them to only focus on one stakeholder. Mm. Now, fortunately, the founder of the company had recruited a pretty enlightened board and I think they made the right longer-term decision as we're still an independent company. Mm -hmm. But I fear that there's undue pressure from the board for some, on some boards that put them uh, at odds with the CEO who may be trying to run a company for a uh, longer-term value creation. I think it does happen. That's the reason I said the, the key, in my view, is the CEO and the board really uh, walk the talk here, that it's long-term and be willing to take the turbulence, which includes the guys trying to, the activists and all the rest. I know, it's, I know it's easier to say than do, yep. but I think it's critical. One more, please. All the way in the back. Please identify yourself. Yeah, hi, my name is Frederick Sunison with Opportunity International. We are a microfinance group and we work on financial inclusion. Now, take this to Africa. Smartphone usage is all-time high. It's growing rapidly. How would you take this discussion and put that in their context, the poor, and same issues we discuss now, but for a totally different audience? Thank you. Uh, you're, you're talking about for businesses there, or? People, businesses, small, uh, you know, women in particular, getting access to cell phones. Like Whole you want to tap on the brakes in, in a place like Africa, I, I think is what he's saying, or is this a wealthy country issue more than a developing country issue? I, if, you, if you're asking me about our investment or investment in general, I think you have to invest in Africa for a decade, two decades out. So uh, if you're the CEO of a company right now, you have to be investing in Africa for not you, not your successor, but your successor's successor probably. Uh, Tim, one very last question for me. I think in August, uh, you'll, be, you'll have been CEO of Apple for seven years. Um, how much longer do you think you want to be CEO? <laughs> you know, I've, uh, it's a privilege of a lifetime to, to be at Apple and lead the company. And uh, uh, hopefully, I've got some good time left. Tim, thanks for being with us tonight. Yeah, great seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.